And now we pass to the next, next invited speaker, uh, which is uh, Professor Constantina Petrei from uh, University of Galatz. Um, he's a um, uh, full professor and uh, he is uh, specialized in uh, uh, chemistry, analytical chemistry, and also physical organic uh, chemistry. Um, he's habilitated since 2015, and um, uh, he uh, had a lot of uh, published papers in uh, uh, mainly in analytical chemistry uh, around 90, and uh, he has a, a Hirsch index of 34. Um, due to this uh, uh, large experience, he was a member in the Romanian Council. Uh, National Council for Scientific Research and also in um, uh, National Council for um, uh, University Diploma and Titles. And um, he is um, also a member of the European Center of Excellence for Environment and uh, of the Rexdan uh, project. This is a very nice project. I have uh, visited uh, uh, one month ago uh, University of Galatz and um, uh, we learned about this project uh, is um, a ship, a laboratory ship, uh, um, which will host uh, several uh, kind of uh, laboratories and will uh, um, uh, float uh, all the Danube and also some other uh, rivers in Europe, collecting um, um, data as many as possible about uh, climate change, uh, pollution, um, uh, ecotoxicology, and uh, if I understood well, it will be an open uh, infrastructure, and uh, so we maybe in the next years we will have the possibility to the opportunity to to access uh, this infrastructure and to to have missions on uh, on this in these laboratories. So I invite Professor Petre to to give uh, his talk. Okay. Hello. Thank you for the invitation. Uh, in the next minutes, I will present uh, some of our work regarding the development of sensors and biosensors for different uh, foods. Uh, as is known, the sensor are, uh, a lot of sensors were already uh, developed uh, for detection of several anal analytes uh, of uh, crucial importance are the nat the sensitive materials, the structure of these materials, and also the detection technique. The same situation is in the case of biosensors. Uh, the advantage of the biosensor is uh, the biological recognition element uh, immobilized in the sensitive layer. But uh, for some uh, samples and some situation, it's important to use an uh, expert sensory systems that is consisted in an array of sensors, uh, uh, data, analysis, uh, data acquisition, and uh, also use the uh, multivariate data analysis. Uh, the film deposition, the sensitive layer is very important. Uh, this could be realized by different methods, uh, chemical deposition or physical deposition. And uh, one of these methods, I want to highlight this because we have used this in our studies, is the lamu blogge technique. Uh, this is uh, very useful in the case of amphiphilic molecules but uh, also can be used for the deposition of uh, composite films. And the techniques, uh, in summary, is the, the molecules are uh, spread onto the surface. After this is the molecules are compressed till the solid phase is obtained. And after this, the solid uh, is uh, transferred on the electrodes and, to, and this method can prepare sensor of uh, or uh, biosensors. 
uh, some of our application, the field of biosensors, one uh, is regarding the uh, detection of some phenolic compounds. We have used uh, uh, lanthanide bistalosanins, uh, arachidic acid, and uh, tyrosinase. The deposition of this uh, nanocomposite film was uh, uh, carried out by using the lamin blocking technique. The molecules, uh, arachidic acid and phthalocyanin, are on the top of the, of the face, and the uh, tyrosinase is injected near to the interface. And after this, a uh, mixed film is obtained. Uh, and after this, this film is transferred to the solid uh, electrodes or other materials to study the uh, structs or the properties of these compounds. Uh, this is aspect of the sensor. And uh, this is obtained when the pressure is an optimal value. So the <clears throat> quality of the film and the preservation of the biological activity, for example, is studied by infrared spectrometry and uh, the roughness and the morphology of the surface is uh, uh, done by uh, micro, uh, atomic force microscopy. Regarding the response of the biosensor, when it's exposed to different uh, phenolic compounds, you can uh, see here different responses are obtained when different uh, phenolic compounds are studied. And uh, the mechanism is uh, quite complex. The role of each component is uh, important, so we can obtain very good uh, detection limits or performance characteristic of the biosensor. For example, here are some results. Uh, the best uh, sensitivity, selectivity, and all is for the caffeic acid comparing with another compounds. Another study uh, consists in modif modification of a screen print electrode in the laboratory with uh, different materials, with graphene, with ketosan, and uh, also with uh, platinum nanoparticles. And this biosensor was developed to detect the histamine, a very uh, known compound is in, uh, involved in the, some toxicity aspects and, uh, and, uh, and the different allergies. Uh, this compound is uh, present in the fish if it's not so fresh. Um, in this case, we have used the amperometry as detection technique uh, at optimal pH. Uh, we have optimized, optimized also the quantity of the enzyme deposit on the layer and the applied potential, of course. And uh, the amperometric response of the biosensor when it is uh, uh, exposed to the different concentration of uh, histamine is present in this, uh, this image. And from the amperometric data, we have obtained the calibration curve. And uh, the, in this case, we have uh, quite a wide uh, uh, linearity range and a small uh, detection limit uh, above of uh, micromolars. And uh, this uh, biosensor have studied also the stability if we skip in the dark and, and uh, also uh, at four degree, uh, this keep the performance around 10, 15 days. Regarding the selectivity, uh, we have st studied the, uh, the selectivity uh, for the histamine comparing with another biogenic amines. You can see here, the com uh, comparative response of the biosensor uh, when it's exposed to different biogenic amines, of course, the, sel the selectivity, the, the most intense is obtained in the case of uh, histamine. And uh, for the real sample analysis, we have uh, studied different kind of fish, uh, uh, fresh water fish, because in Galatia, <laughs> there are a lot. 
um, I have seen uh, the, the results of uh, fresh and uh, after some hour of storage, we have obtained different amounts. We have validated by uh, the ELISA method. And uh, also in the, for the biogenic amines, we have uh, developed some kind of sensors based on uh, <clears throat> polypyrrole topped with different uh, uh, agents and we have do the deposition by electrochemical methods by chronomperometry. We have obtained different sensors with different kind of uh, responses. And uh, for example, you can see in this image, different morphology of the, <clears throat> of the sensitive film which is related with the nature of the doping agent from the structure of the, of the polymer. And uh, the voltammetric response of the sensor when it is exposed to uh, some typical biogenic amines, for example, potassium and ammonia also, I can see some different responses and uh, this study was, uh, these responses are uh, related with the uh, redox activity of the polymeric, of the polypyrrole, of the polymer. Also, uh, if the doping agent have activity, uh, the activity can be also uh, seen and also, uh, and the influence of the biogenic amines and the, this, uh, uh, complex uh, environment. Um, <clears throat> for the, the study, we have used uh, uh, fresh, uh, fresh water fish, uh, we have do a monitorization of the freshness during 12 days by uh, using uh, as, met as detection technique, the square wave voltammetry we also have used the uh, gas chromatography for identification of the of the of the odors and uh, for data analysis we have used here principal component analysis and also the discriminant analysis to see if our system is able to follow the fish freshness in order to to be able to detect the day uh, of uh, keeping the, the fish in the fridge. So we have uh, do this and uh, our model have shown that uh, is able to, to detect the day of, uh, uh, of freshness. And uh, last uh, in, uh, in this presentation, some study regarding the extra virgin olive oils. In this case, we have used uh, some Monovarietal oil, extra virgin olive oil from from Spain. Uh, all the sample was characterized by uh, uh, expert panels to to detect the bitterness index and also by chromatography. And uh, our sensors in this case was the carbon based electrodes electrodes modified with extra virgin olive oils. And the, the responses of uh, these sensors when are immersed in uh, casel solution or uh, hydrochloric acid, you can see here the peaks. Uh, these are related with the presence of the phenolic compounds from the uh, extra virgin olive oils. And uh, for the characterization of the sample, we have uh, uh, developed the PCA model and the criteria for the discrimination of the sample was the um, olive variety, um, not the bitterness in this case, but also we have uh, some correlation. For the validation of this uh, result, we have used the discriminant analysis. You can see we have a very good correlation, both in calibration and in validation and uh, low uh, errors also in the both situations. Uh, for the correlation, we have uh, study 
the correlation between the voltammetric responses of the sensors and the bitterness index, we can see a good correlation between the, these uh, two kinds of measurements. Of course, it's important because the phenolic compounds are the main responsible for the bitter test, taste or uh, uh, spicy taste of the extra virgin olive oils. And also uh, we have established the uh, regression models between the sensors responses and the analytical parameters obtained by chromatography. Uh, we have good correlation with the phenolic compounds and uh, a special class of the compounds, voloropein and tyrosol. Uh, that is in this class of compounds also the mine the phenolic compounds from the uh, extra virgin olive oils. And uh, the conclusions, uh, yeah, I, we can say that uh, electrochemical sensor and biosensor are useful in the food analysis and the different strategy must be used. Uh, depending on the purpose of the study, we can detect one analyte or uh, a, a chemical fingerprint of the sample. Of course, after that, we can, we, is it necessary to use the multivariate data analysis? I want to thank uh, for uh, Minister of Research for our project regarding the extra virgin olive oils, to the Institute of Health from Sevilla for the samples and also to our collaborators from uh, Valladolid University of Spain. And also thank you for your attention. Thank you very much for your presentation. Uh, if there are questions, Ana Maria. Ana Maria Urban. Uh, congratulations for your uh, nice presentation and interesting. For me, it's more interesting the part of the biogenic amines and uh, related to detection of histamine. I would like to know, you said that you used the, uh, the amine oxidase, which is less, very, very less active. How many units did you immobilize on the surface of the electrodes? Because it has less than 0 0.5 units. Uh... I don't remember exactly what uh, what the quantity, but uh, the responses were very high. The amperometric response of the uh, it's quite uh, because I have tried, uh, tested. I have developed single wall carbon nanotubes with ionic liquids. Okay, and we use the diamine oxidase for putrescine and cadaverin. But but we didn't succeed to lower the detection limit more than 100 micromolar. That's why I was uh, quite curious. And also, the... Dai, uh, is uh, sigma, commercial. Uh, yes, Sigma is very, very less. We don't have another option for the diamine oxidase. Yes, we have used also nanomaterials to improve the signal. We have used Yes, the, we the... test different. And uh, what kind of uh, matrix for immobilization of enzyme did you use? Uh, was ketosan and uh, you mix it together with the um, nanomaterial? No, it wasn't the top of the ketosan. So drop wise on the yes. top of the functionalized. Yes. <laughs> Curious, but anyway, yes. it's interesting. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Okay. Hello, excellent presentation. I switch the direction. I'm engineer in electronics. I've done all the part recognition. Congratulations, you use these methods practically. You are, were not tempted to say you do artificial intelligence because part of recognition. Every people, if do a signal processing, they say, ah, system intelligent is not. Your has the background to be intelligent. My question is, um, you use that, and I see you, as you know, in sensors, selectivity is not so difficult, but uh, sorry, uh, sensitivity, selectivity is a big problem. And I see uh, you done, you, you obtain a very good selectivity. Did you use these pattern recognition methods also to obtain this very good selectivity? 
Yes, for the building of the regression uh, models, we have used the uh, multivariate data analysis. So we have. And that helps a lot. Yes. Yes. Maybe we'll discuss uh, later. Yes, because we have yeah, thank you. Uh, many thank components. You. Excellent. Congratulations. Thank you. Um, I have just... Uh, oh. you, speak here about, uh, you speak here about the correlation between the uh, signal of uh, your equipment and the concentration of uh, target substance. Okay? If you have virus composition in the in the near to target, you use the correlation with multifactorial correlation or single correlation, because you show response depending on the X concentration of the, but this X is, you, you can have, have here X1, X2, X3. Yes, sir. Uh, As example, the, the salinity of the media, the pH, and what are other factors in the, in the samples, can modify the response of your equipment. Yes, we have used uh, different factors and uh, the models are optimal for this uh, situation. So you can use uh, three components or four, depends. If I have uh, the fish with uh, salt and the fish with the salt and I measure the uh, mean concentration, I have different response. Yes, the, the salinity uh, have a great importance, of course. Uh, if the fish is frozen, for because sometimes we eat the fish frozen <laughs> several years ago, so if there is uh, an increase of uh, uh, amines, uh, biogenic amines in, in the frozen fish? Yes. This, uh, the quantity is important uh, and the time, even the fish is kept at minus 18 degrees, the degradation of the proteins continues and uh, a lot of biogenic amines are formed. So uh, we have to avoid. <laughs> yes, or to try to put some acid during the cooking of the, of the fish. This is the solution. <laughs> Okay, thank you very much. If there are some other questions or maybe from online uh, audience. Oh, thank you. Thank you again. Thank you.